Hey guys, it's Mike Drudge coming to you from Vaught RV here in Fort Worth, Texas. I'm really excited today because I've got a brand new 2023 Tiffin Wayfair. This is the 25RW floor plan. This is in sea mist, full body paint. I think it's one of the more forgiving colors, easy to keep clean. It's also got the largest slide out of any of the Tiffin Wayfairs, and I'll point out some advantages that brings to the equation here in a little bit. I like this floor plan if you're a couple that's looking for sort of class A functionality but you don't want to go down into a travel van as a wet bath. This has a tradi traditional very spacious bath in it. So before I get started let's go inside. I want to point out my personal three favorite aspects of this floor plan. Number one, this has a large 12 volt refrigerator. The twin bed models have a much smaller refrigerator. This has a larger 12 volt refrigerator. Number two, this has a step in shower with a low threshold. You don't have to step up into the shower. I love this. And finally, number three, with this large slide out, it creates the most living space of all the Wayfarers. Okay, each of the Wayfarers are 25 feet, eight inches long, so they're short enough to be easy to drive, easy to park. They're all going to be built on the Sprinter platform. This is the 3.0 liter turbocharged diesel engine. It's on the 3500 series cutaway chassis. So when Tiffin gets this in, they get this and the chassis and they build everything behind it. So just so you know, there's a lot of functionality about this Sprinter that I'll touch on in a little bit, but if you're shopping motorhomes and you're seeing them built on the 3500 series chassis, they're all going to be essentially the same in their functionality. Now walking around the coach, right here is our fuel fill. This is sort of a security aspect because you can't open this unless the door is open. Open that up, fuel it up, close it, close the door. I've had some people say, well, hey, I don't want the fumes going into my coach while I'm fueling up. And never fear, open this up, close the door while you're fueling, open it back up, close that, and now you're secured for travel. Now I mentioned this is the largest slide out on all the Wayfarers that uh, has its advantages and it has its disadvantages. The advantage of course when we go inside you'll be able to see how much living space is in there. One of the disadvantages is this has the least amount of basement storage of the four Wayfair floor plans. So, depends on what you value most. If you want a big garage, lots of space down underneath, this will have the least. This has got 37 cubic feet. The other Murphy bed model, besides this one, has uh, about twice as much basement storage. When you get up into the twin bed models, you're getting even more than that, just FYI. So, right here is our generator. This is a diesel powered 3200 uh, watt generator. And right here is a storage compartment on what I call the utility side. Right away you see the Dirt Devil uh, central vac system. So even though we're in a 25 foot coach, you have a central vac system, which is really fantastic. Um, first coach I bought that had a central vac, I sort of rolled my eyes. I actually like it a lot because I don't have to carry a separate little hand vac. They do a really fantastic job. Now, this little storage compartment here is going to be your utility bay. So this is where we're going to be hooking up um, your sewer hose, your whole house water filter is in here, your water pump easily accessible right here. We have our gate valves uh, here and our outdoor shower. So depending on if you're hooking up to city water or drawing from the holding tank, you'll set this uh, lever accordingly, hot and cold on your outdoor shower. And you can turn your water pump on and off out here as well as inside. So if you're doing some maintenance out here, you can do that right there. There are two 120 volt outlets in here as well. Some folks like to put a little space heater in here. If it gets crazy cold, you've got an outlet to be able to do that. You have a little storage uh, tube right here for your stinky slinky. I like having that there so you don't have to put it in a Tupperware tub or something and throw it somewhere else. It's always got a dedicated place for that. 
right there. Now, the doors, these compartment doors on Tiffins are all built essentially the same way. Very stout. When you shop around, and you should, grab a hold of the door and see if you can twist it. This thing is extremely rigid, even though this is the smallest platform class C type unit that Tiffin makes. This is a really stout door. When you close this, it's like closing a high-end car door or something. It's just really tight, makes a tight seal all the way around. Uh, the first Tiffin that I bought, <laughs> that was one thing that really impressed me. I said, oh, man, I love the way that door sounds when you close it. It's just really great. So really good quality. It's the same process. They build the doors on their high-end diesel pushers. Coming around to the back, this is a one-piece molded fiberglass rear cap, automotive style. So there's no seams anywhere back here. The integrated camera, backup camera, is up on top there. We have a 5,000 pound hitch here, so you can tow a small vehicle behind this uh, for your toad, as we like to call it, or a dinghy vehicle. Here's your 30 amp shore power plug right here in the very back of the coach. And of course your seven way uh, if you are pulling a small trailer or a dinghy vehicle. Now coming around on what I call the fun side of the unit, this is where all the fun stuff happens. Underneath our, I think we're 14 to 16 foot awning. So you can see it's lighted. We've got integrated speakers and also additional lights in the awning. I'm not putting it out right now because it's really windy here today. I don't want the wind whipping that thing up and down. A lot of people will ask me, how windy does it have to get before I should roll my awning in? Or a slide out even with the slide topper on it. Yeah, about 20 miles an hour for me. If it gets in the 30 mile an hour plus, I feel better pulling in the slides or pulling in the awning. It's a judgment call on your part, but if that thing's flapping up and down, you want to be safe and pull it in no matter what kind of awning or slide topper you have. This will reveal our propane bay right here. You notice that it is not lockable. None of the propane bay doors on RVs can be lockable by law. For safety, you have to be able to access this, and you can. So that's what's going on there. We've got potable water fill right here, a gravity fill. So what's nice is not only can you fill your holding tanks with pressurized water over in the utility bay, the wet bay, but you can gravity fill it right here as well. So if you're out boondocking, you have no supply of pressurized city water through a hose, you can chug 10, 20, 30 gallons of water in here. Speaking of which, 30 gallon fresh water tank is an upgrade in 2023 on these models. Now this has the Truma AquaGo on-demand water heater. If you get an all-electric coach, you won't have this. This is powered by propane exclusively. So perpetual hot water, uh, Truma is the best brand in that whole field of tankless water heaters, and that's what you get on this unit. A little access panel for the backside of your refrigerator. Now this is the storage uh, bay that you're going to use constantly because it's right here by the door, it's under the awning. You're going to be using this more than any, anything, and I appreciate it that it's also the largest compartment. So this side opens with just this lever. You can reach in here and release this part to open the whole thing. This is a good amount of storage for a little 25 foot unit. We've got our power cord in here and some other accessories taking up some room. This is our Xantrex inverter that lives in here. Uh, I don't have time to go into a lot of details about the inverter, but if you're having an electrical problem, educate yourself on that inverter, how to reset it and what it does. Maybe we'll do a video about that exclusively at some point, but just know this is where your inverter is. It doesn't take up much room, but you have a nice amount of storage. Plus, I don't know if you can see a little cubby up here on top as well. So you'll be using this compartment all the time. Now. This is fun. <laughs> we have our outdoor TV, which is optional, and obviously this one has it. So it's integrated into the sidewall. It's an LG. Tiffin's been using LG TVs for a long time. Um, our Tiffin that we bought had LG TVs, and I fell in love with them because, hey, life is good, right? <laughs> it's even better than a Tiffin. But 
Well, LG TVs are easy to mirror content on your phone, I've found. Now, there's a lot of smart TVs out there right now, but it's so easy to mirror content. So if you're out somewhere and you just want to cast something to this TV and you don't have cable or satellite, which you do on this, but uh, if you don't, you can just cast things from your phone onto that TV. I really like that. LED light here as well. Now these are all frameless windows on the Wayfarers and you'll uh, notice that every other line uh, on the Tiffin, the Class A's, the Gassers, the diesel, diesel Pushers do not have frameless windows, they're framed. This adds a nice sleek look to the coach. Okay, what else can I tell you? It's a great unit. Uh, again, I think I mentioned it's sea, foam, sea mist is the color. Again, the most forgiving color. This has not been washed, unfortunately. Sorry about that. But it doesn't really show up the little water spots like a darker color will. So I like the, uh, I like the color. 50th anniversary emblem right there. Before we go inside, I have three favorite things about the entryway, okay? One of them is this integrated shade within the door so total privacy at night just pull that up i love that second you have a trash can holder right here in the door i love that we're all the time looking for a place to hang a trash bag or something in our big motorhome that we have this is great it's right here in the door you can put a regular bag in there fantastic and finally there's a screen on a roller right here for the screen door. It doesn't take up any room at all. It's not hinged. It just disappears out of the way when you don't need it. I really like that feature. I always want to give you an idea of what it looks like in transit with the slide in. Now this is the longest slide in all of the Wayfair family. So I've got a slide starting here all the way up to the second recliner. And as you can see, I can access the bathroom, I can access the storage and pantry. Of course, our refrigerator opens a good bit, enough to access it, and then all the way through here. So this is what it's gonna look like when you're going down the road, you wanna stop, go back and use the restroom, grab a beverage out of the refrigerator or what have you. Everything remains accessible. Now, when we step up inside the coach, we have our multiplex screen right here. This is kind of the brains of the coach. You're going to control really all the settings here as far as slides, lighting, and so on. If I go home, I have all of our lighting, our tank levels, and so on. There's a, a separate page for just the lights, so I can turn lights on and off individually. Our slides are controlled here, and finally, settings. So this is really handy. I can always go back home. You can't really break anything. I know a lot of folks get these. They don't want to mess anything up. You're not going to break anything. You can always get back home. We'll give you a quick rundown of how this works before you take the coach. Our awning uh, controls are right here. In and out, of course, stop. And then this is our boss sound system control right here inside the door for those speakers that you're seeing out there and they put this cover on here i guess to protect it i like the lighted grab bars both on this side and this side makes it real attractive stepping up into the coach so let me point out the bigfoot levelers here as well and a few things to point out on this side right here is our hydraulic leveling control panel we have some on off switches for our spider control below here and i really like this in 2023 this backlit led backlit grab bar this just looks like high-end diesel pusher styling right here it's really nice um, your house batteries live underneath the step here and then your battery disconnect switch is right here at the door which it typically is on an RV so you can pop that off save the batteries if you're putting it in storage for a period so real handy to have that there now let's have a little tour on the inside of this unit if you're looking at Wayfarers maybe you're downsizing from a large class A motorhome maybe you're going up from a travel van and you're tired of that wet bath and you're tired of the cramped spaces this is kind of a sweet in-between range so um, I'm a class A kind of guy. I like our, our, the room in our class A, but I also realize that we're real limited in where we can park. It's a beast. It's a big thing. So I really love that you have a lot of class A functionality in a 25 foot coach here. So, and that happens 
on this model, particularly because of this slide out. Now again, there's two Murphy bed floor plans in the Wayfair lineup, the JW and this, the RW, and there's two twin bed floor plans in the Wayfair lineup. The twin bed floor plans have much more basement storage, a little less living space up top. It's a judgment call on your part. There, there's no right or wrong. It's whatever works best for you. But let's start in the galley area here. Now this is interesting. This unit has two televisions. So right across from your recliners, I have an LG TV. And then right across from the sofa, I have an LG TV. This doubles as the bedroom here, which I'll get to in just a minute. But no matter where you're at, you got an easy TV viewing angle. Speaking of the TV, this does not preclude storage space behind it. You can flip this up. It's on a door, so you still have storage space up in here. Also, your Wally satellite receivers in here. So it's nice that you still have that storage behind the TV. You have a convection microwave here, vented range hood. Now, nice solid surface countertops. You have a single basin stainless steel undermount sink here. Um, nice stainless steel and plenty big enough, even again for a 25 foot coach. Sometimes you get a dinky little sink. This is a nice size sink. Now for power, just pop this up. I have both USB connections and 120 volt connections on uh, rid readily accessible on the countertop. Now this does have propane on board. We pointed out the tank underneath. You can option these as an all electric coach. In that case, this would be an induction cooktop. But here we have propane. I like propane. A lot of people prefer to not have propane on board. Again, up to you. But you have a two burner cooktop on here. This closes to uh, keep it clean and nice and tidy. Under here, more storage. Tiffin's always great about their cabinet build. And I have three drawers down here. Now these are all soft clothes. I really like that. They're not slamming closed. Now this top drawer is interesting. What Tiffin did was they integrated a butcher block, a cutting board in this drawer. You can push this out of the way and access storage underneath it, but it's a butcher block on top. Um, I don't know if how practical this is. Uh, if I'm chopping carrots, doing food prep down here, it seems like it could get really messy, but I'm not the chief chef of our house. So maybe it's, I'd be curious what you think about the cutting board location. Maybe you would rather just this be an open drawer, which I suppose you could just get rid of this, but your vote counts more than mine. Let me know what you think about that. Uh, either way, it's soft clothes and I do like that. Now, I alluded to our 12 volt fridge. I'm a fan of these 12 volt refrigerators for a couple of reasons. They're larger, they work better. You get, within two hours, you can be freezing ice cream in here. A tr traditional gas absorption fridge, you're turning it on the night before to get it down to temperature. These work really just like a residential refrigerator. And again, much deeper, much larger. You don't have those fins in the back like you do with a traditional um, RV refrigerator. Now there's no separate setting for the temperature in the freezer. It's only in the fridge portion. So when you turn the fridge portion colder, you're turning this colder as well. Another question we get occasionally. Uh, storage up on top, and these are a fully adjustable shelves. Uh, Tiffin started doing that a couple years on about all their motor homes so that if you have different sized items, you can fit them in there or take that shelf out altogether. Um, moving back, since we're on this side of the coach, I've got a sound bar up here for this LG TV. And if I open up this door, it reveals uh, more controls for us. I won't go into detail on each of these, but I'll point out what they are. You do have a solar panel on this that lives up on the roof, of course. Um, think of that as a trickle charger for this coach. So if you're out, no shore power, you at least have a trickle charger to keep your batteries happy. Your Truma AquaGo control, so this is your water heater. Your triple vision setting, so this is just selecting whether you're on antenna, which it is now, or cable. So if you have cable at your RV park or campground where you're at, make sure you have that selected and not antenna, otherwise it's not gonna tune in the channels. This is an easy thing to forget. 
uh, if this isn't set correctly. So just mental note, this is your inverter control. And then finally the generator control right here as well. Um, more drawers. I've got three drawers here, all soft close. And then if I open this up, this reveals a bay of 12 volt fuses and 120 volt breakers. And they're all labeled for what they are. When you get a new coach, spend some time and learn where the breakers are, what they do, because the last thing you want to do at three in the morning, if there's an electrical issue somewhere is to have to dig out that manual and figure it out. Um, there are a lot of good forums to help you, but anyway, just get familiarize yourself with where the breakers and fuses are and they're nicely labeled here. So that takes some of the mystery out of it. Now, nice big closet here. Again, in a 25 foot coach, you don't always get a lot of storage and sometimes you don't get a closet at all. We do have one with a closet rod in here that's lighted. The, the LED light is actually integrated in the closet rod itself. And then this shelf down here is adjustable up and down as well. So I really like that. Now we are in what I call the bedroom living room area. So maybe that's the living room kitchen area, but it all kind of just merges from one to the other. This is a Murphy bed floor plan, right? So we have a sofa by day and a bed by night. Sofa by day, perfect viewing angle to that TV. So maybe your spouse wants to be watching something different on that TV while you're watching something different on this TV. You can do that. Um, I should point out, these are the lagoon table mounts here for optional lagoon tables. So you can see one on either side of the recliners as well as the sofa. You can pop a table in here um, for eating um, or just have, you know, have it for sitting a drink on, although you have drink holders here as well. So this is our Murphy bed. Again, it is a sofa by day. It's a bed by night. So what's nice about it, you can see all this room in here, two, three, four people even can be in here and not being all crowded. There's plenty of room to maneuver about here. So if when it's time to turn this into a bed, the switches are right here on this armrest. So I'm just gonna, first of all, remove these cushions. And I'm going to deploy the bed. It's pretty quick too. There's legs on either side that you'll want to put down for support. And I've found it's easier if you drop them down now before you put it all the way down. Otherwise, they sometimes hit the armrests of the sofa. Boom. Make sure those are all the way out like so. And now we have a queen bed. Now we have USB charging ports on either side of the bed to charge your phone at night. And then if you want individual reading lights, just reach up here and touch this twice for reading. You can see that little blue light pops on. That's actually a tiny little bit of a night light too. So if it's pitch black in here, you touch it once, that does cast a little bit of blue light. You can also uh, control right here, your reading light switch on the wall as well. So, and then there's a, while I have the bed down, there's some shallow storage up here as well. One little quick tip I'll give you, if you're camping in super hot climates, and this is true, whatever kind of RV you have, you can go to a big box home improvement store and get this stuff called Reflectix and pop up there on the outside wall inside your cabinets. It really makes a difference to help keep them cool, particularly up in the galley area where you've got food items, but anywhere. So a little quick tip for you. All right, so let's get this bed out of the way so we can continue our tour. And we're back to a living room. So there you have it. Now, I'm going to do the little don't see do with the cameraman and I'll show you the bathroom. So this has a very spacious bathroom again for a 25 foot coach. There's always a sacrifice in every floor plan you get. A lot of times when you get one feature, you're sacrificing another. This checks a lot of boxes, I think, in that it has a lot of living space and a quite spacious bathroom for a 25 foot coach. Nicely sized shower, 
porcelain foot flush toilet that is angled enough to give me access to a basin style sink and storage here um, in the bathroom. Now one feature I really love is that it's easy to get in and out of this shower especially if you if you have knee or hip problems or just anyway usually with an rv you're stepping up into a shower and there's a you know at least a three four five six eight inch threshold to step up into in this case the shower pan is actually level with the floor maybe even down a little bit so it's very easy for me to step in here and uh, access the shower. Now, shower curtain's interesting because it's on a roller with a wiper on it. So when you close it, it's constantly keeping this dry and clean. And the material on it is textured so it doesn't show spotting, but it's a pretty neat idea. And obviously just rolls out of the way. So real easy. There's a little blue button here. It's a shower miser. This is to preserve water so you're not using water while you're waiting on it to get warm. Uh, that's what this little blue button is on the wall. Skylight up here, there's plenty of headroom up here, so I'm exactly six feet tall. I could be much taller and have not have to worry about height than here. Might have to worry about this, but not inside the shower. My one complaint, I guess, for this uh, unit is the lighting's pretty sparse in the vanity area. So if I'm looking at the mirror, there's not a lot of great lighting here. I might supplement that with something um, if, if I'm looking at this coach myself. Reason enough not to buy it? No, of course not, but I like to point out the good with the bad. There's a little bit of storage above as well and some storage underneath on either side of the unit as well as the cubby cubby below. You do, of course, have outlet power there. For the hair dryer, I don't use hair dryers anymore, but I heard some people do. All right, let's go to the front of the coach and have a look around. Now, we've got really comfortable recliners up here in the living room. The older we get, the more important a comfortable recliner is, right? So, perfect TV viewing angle, push button controls right here to extend the footrest and recline. Oh my goodness. Okay, all right, I'm okay. This is just where I can sleep. This, this is not bad at all. There's also USB ports in each one of these, so I can be sitting here and control, or rather charge my phone. Obviously stainless steel cup holders, and then there's some storage in here for remotes and so on. We do have our frameless windows, which crank out instead of slide. An advantage of that, of course, is if it does come up a rain shower, it can't rain in, but you can leave them out to keep uh, the airflow going. Reading lights above here, they're simply touch to turn on, real handy. And then some storage above here, and I like that these have struts on them. Actually, the hinges are spring-loaded, and they're soft clothes. So, if your significant other is sleeping back there, they're not hearing boom, you know, with the door when you grab a magazine or something out of there. Soft close on both of those, which I really like. So one thing that I forgot to point out is what's behind door number five. This is a little door that has a curtain in it and we can pull out this privacy curtain all the way over here. So if your significant other is sleeping in, you want a little privacy, you can pull this and uh, afford some privacy in there. Just tuck this away close this door and you don't even know it's there. I almost missed it myself. Pretty cool. Now, I've always been a fan of cab over bunk floor plans for a couple of reasons. We're going down the road, the slides in, of course, we stop, we just want to sleep a little bit, maybe take a cat nap, stretch your legs out a little bit. Maybe my spouse lays on the sofa up there, which she can do without deploying the bed or the slide. I can hop up here and have a nap without doing any slide work or anything like that, just hop up here and have a nap. So I like having that room when you're camped somewhere, you're set up for a while, it's a great place to toss a day pack, a backpack or whatever and use it for storage. And we have a ladder up here to access it and make it easier to access this area. Just pop that on there. So how much room's up there? I'll show you. So I'm six feet tall. I have plenty of room to stretch out and have a nap up here. Not a whole lot of headroom, but enough for me to take a nap. I can maneuver up here six feet tall. Kids, no problem at all. But just to give you an idea of the space up here. So during transit, you'll want to have this up most of the time, probably all the time, so you can have more 
accessibility to the cab area simply pop that up it's on gas struts and it'll stay up like that now this makes it real easy to get up here into the cab area the first class C my wife and I ever bought did not have this so every time we access the cab we were kind of doing this contortionist maneuver to get up there this makes it real nice again I'm six feet tall I'm standing straight up here and I can sit down into these seats speaking of these seats they do rotate around so you can add to your livability of the front of the coach with that since I'm here let's talk about the cockpit area okay sitting in the cockpit here these are very comfortable seats um, very comfortable seats I might add I have uh, sciatica sometimes after driving for a long time not to share my medical history with you but these are really comfortable seats um, before I forget the battery boost switch is right down here so in the event that you get in here I don't have enough juice pop that over there just about every RV motorized is gonna have a battery boost and it's right down here um, where you step up into the coach now these seats are adjustable and they're heated all right so like a high-end automobile there's multiple settings one two and three I would suggest maybe one for the driver two for the passenger and three setting for when you want to turn these things around for the rest of the coach because there's once you get that setting uh, you don't have to figure it out every time so that was that's what I would do on the presets anyway they're uh, adjustable and of course you can see our heated seat uh, there Ad uh, mirrors are adjustable on the outside and they fold in when necessary now up on our cluster panel and this is going to be consistent with other Mercedes Sprinter chassis uh, platforms that you're going to see you've got a home button here that I tap and then there's a little basically mouse button on each side that you can scroll through the various functions so your cruise control it's got a number of safety features which I'll throw up on the screen here high beam assist uh, collision avoidance uh, adaptive cruise control things like that really nice safety features and you can set those and tweak those to your personal preferences and on the right side you're going to be controlling your entertainment uh, system here and as you scroll through each one of these you've got media information your phone your radio apps that you can put on here settings for this vehicle really handy and so I not only can I control it here as a touch screen I can do it right here on the steering wheel so my hands aren't leaving the steering wheel now you can control the temperature uh, at the speed of the fan and the temperature uh, right here on this cluster and then of course it's a uh, keyless uh, situation here so you got to have the key fob close to the unit to start it now I ran into this here's another quick tip in the event that one of these batteries goes bad and it's not recognizing this key fob you're gonna get a message on your cluster up here that says place key in marked spot <laughs> okay there's no marked spot up here that says place key here i promise you it's not marked anywhere but it is right there so if it's not recognizing it take that key fob pop it right up in there and you'll be off to the races so that'll save you fumbling through that uh, owner's manual at three in the morning sometime we have cup holders up here i've got cup holders in the door and cup holders up here so multiple beverage options love that and a little glove box compartment here these floor mats are removable for cleaning i like that and i like too that you can take these out and just wipe this all down there's no carpet up here at all makes it real easy because you're this is the area it's going to get dirty the most stepping in and out of gas stations and so on up on top we have our led lights and a little cubby up here for maps and so on now there are blackout uh screens for each one of these windows up here so for for total privacy a lot of folks will like to put uh, fashion a curtain themselves across here to help climate control the back of the coach that's something you could do maybe that's something I'll do a quick tip on but a lot of people will opt to do that but anyway you can block this all out for both sunlight and privacy 
There is a little receptacle right here to put a table. So once you spin these chairs around, you can have a table here as well. So you can have two people sitting on the sofa or the recliners, I should say, as well as two people here with a table in between for visiting and having a beverage or whatnot. And one thing I love about this is the camera shows up right in this cluster as well. And it's really easy to see. So when I pop this into reverse, the camera comes up here immediately and you can see what a nice clear full color view that is not only safety when you're backing into a campsite but when you're going down the road if you're towing a car behind here you can keep an eye on it and see traffic approaching you this is actually tilted a little bit high for my taste i like to see right down the back of the coach but that's easy enough to adjust but uh, nice to have that safety feature all right guys thanks for joining me with this tour on the 25 rw before i leave you a little quick tip i'm a big believer in checklists before you travel and i'm about to drive this away so go around and make sure all your baggage doors are securely latched it's easy especially on the way tiffin designs these latches to sometimes just have them closed almost all the way but not fully latched go around and push on it until you hear a click now that one was already latched already we're good Better yet, go ahead and lock it. That way you know this thing can't open in transit. As always, guys, I appreciate you joining me. This is one of four different Wayfarer floor plans. If you'd like to learn more about it or if you have questions about it and you can't come see us in person, drop a question below. I'll do my best to get to it. Be happy to get you paired up with one of our great sales guys. While you're down there, go ahead and click like and subscribe. That way you'll be the first to know when we post more videos videos just like this. So hey, if you want to learn more about roughing it smoothly in a Tiffin, I hope you'll give us a call. Come see us.